let's say you are on a lake in a sailboat sailing away to glory and you have this rock a big rock along with you on the boat and what you do is you basically take this rock and drop it into the lake and actually watch it sink to the bottom of the lake let's say it sinks to the bottom of the lake so the question now is what happens to the level of water in the lake will the water level actually go up will it rise will it fall or just remain the same let's think about this a little bit and and go, go over the thought process to attack a problem like this so whenever somebody says the water level goes up or down you immediately think of volume of liquid displaced so let's say drop a piece of some solid into a into a jar of water so there is an initial level of of the liquid and then you drop an item and that item sinks you will immediately see there is an increase in the level of the water so and that is because water has to give way to this object that is you know sinking in that liquid so that much amount of water is displaced so if the object is not sinking but in fact it is floating then the the amount of water displaced in this case or the increase in level of water is going to be dependent on how much volume of the solid has is submerged under water and that is the amount of volume that gets displaced and accordingly the water level rises so this we know from buoyancy and archimedes principle so volume of the liquid displaced is equal to volume of the body that is submerged under the liquid right so in this case we know that the rock is actually sinking so so the volume of water displaced will be exactly equal to the volume of the rock and accordingly the water level in the lake should go up right so hold your thought there so there's something else happening here at the same time so remember that this rock was once on the sailboat and the sailboat has has been floating at all times and what do we know about floating objects again based on archimedes principle we know that um according to the law of flotation weight of the displaced liquid weight of the displaced liquid is equal to weight of the body right weight of the sailboat here so before um the rock was offloaded from the boat and the boat as a whole is floating and it is displacing a certain amount of water correct now when the rock is off the boat the boat suddenly becomes lighter by that much and now the volume of the displaced liquid is lower than before and why is that because even after the rock is off the boat the boat is still floating so the law of flotation still applies correct so the weight of the body in that case is lower because the rock is off the boat so the weight of the displaced liquid is lower and so the volume of the displaced liquid is lower so what does that mean that means that the water level actually should go down correct so in, there are two things going on here simultaneously one the rock is off the boat and into the lake and it displaces a certain amount of water equal to its volume because of which the water level should rise but at the same time the boat becomes lighter and the volume of the liquid that is displaced by the boat as an entity actually goes down so to figure out whether this water level is eventually going to rise fall or remain the same we basically have to compare two situations here the first situation where the rock was on the boat we need to calculate the total volume of the water displaced in this case and then the situation number 2 where the rock is offloaded from the boat so it goes off the boat into the lake then we again calculate the total volume of water displaced basically by the rock and by the boat and then you compare these two volumes and if the volume of water displaced goes up after you drop the rock then the water level has to rise the if the volume of the displaced liquid is lower than before then the, the water level goes down and if those two volumes are the same then the water level does not change so that is basically our thought process behind solving this problem so we don't have any numbers to work with here so, but that's okay because we can just assign symbols to various quantities and work this out systematically so for situation number 1 when the rock is on the boat let's say the mass of the sailboat along with the rock when the rock was on it is capital m let's say that is the mass of the boat with the rock 
So what do we know about this floating sailboat? We know that the weight of the displaced liquid should be weight of the sailboat, correct? And so when we say weight here, we mean mass of the displaced liquid times acceleration due to gravity and mass of the body times acceleration due to gravity. So if we can get rid of the G factor there, what we'll be left with is mass of the displaced water is should be equal to mass of the body for this floating sailboat. So now, what is the mass of the displaced liquid? Mass of the displaced liquid should be equal to volume of the displaced liquid times the density of the liquid. So let's call this V0 displaced. That's the volume of the displaced liquid in, in, this, in this first situation when the rock is on the boat times rho water. That is the mass of the displaced liquid mass of the displaced water that should be equal to the mass of the body and mass of the sailboat with the rock is capital M. V0 that should be equal to M divided by rho water. So this is our volume of water displaced in situation number one and let's hold on to this. So now what happens in this situation this is when the rock is off the boat into the lake. So in this case, the volume of the water displaced, let's call it V final displaced. This comprises of two parts as we said earlier. So that will be volume of water displaced by the rock plus volume of water displaced by the ship, by the sailboat. So now what is volume of water displaced by the rock? That should be exactly equal to the volume of the rock, correct? Because it is sinking, it displaces exactly the same amount of water as its volume. So volume of the rock will be mass of the rock, let's call it small m, divided by density of the rock, plus, and what is the volume of the water displaced by the sailboat? It should be the mass of the water displaced by the sailboat, which is equal to the mass of the sailboat, correct? Because it is still floating. And what is the mass of the sailboat now? It should be capital M minus small m because the rock is off the boat and divided by density of water. So what did we do here? We said volume of water displaced is equal to the mass of the water displaced divided by density of water. But mass of the water displaced according to the law of flotation here is equal to the mass of the body which is equal to capital M minus small m. So, so now if you want to rearrange these terms so that you will be able to compare Vf and V0 directly, let's do that. It will be easier for us to see what the difference is. Let's just break this up and we can write it as m divided by rho water plus small m divided by rho rock minus small m divided by rho water. So now now you can clearly see that the only difference between Vf and V0 is this factor here, m divided by rho rock minus m divided by water. So if we can somehow determine if this factor is less than 0 or greater than 0, then we'll know if Vf is less than V0 or Vf is more than V0, right? So let's think about this a little bit. What do we know about rho rock versus rho water or density of the rock versus density of water here? So we know that the rock sinks in water. So that means it is safe for us to assume that density of the rock is greater than density of water because you know that if something is sinking in a liquid, then that something is denser than the liquid. Otherwise, it wouldn't sink. So then if we take out the small m outside these brackets, then we can rewrite this as this will be 1 over rho rock minus 1 over rho water. So if rho rock is greater than rho water, then 1 over rho rock should be less than 1 over rho, rock, rho water. So this whole thing here, this, this thing in the brackets here will be less than 0, correct? And that means that you're actually subtracting this much amount of volume from m divided by rho water. So that means Vf is actually less than V0. Vf is less than V0. This tells us that since the volume of the water displaced is lower when the rock is off the boat and into the lake, the water level should actually fall. Water level should fall in the lake. So that is the answer to your question.